Well, this is what I've been waiting for. Woo! Big water. Big rain. Big wind. And little Joe. <laughs> guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm up north, I'm by myself. I'm getting ready to venture out on a six day solo wilderness trek. I'm going to be covering 125 kilometers over the course of six days, roughly 20 clicks a day. Uh, some days are a little bit shorter, some days are a little bit longer, but that's the average. I'll be canoeing all day, I'll be portaging, I'll be setting up camp under a tarp, I'll be fishing for trout for my dinner. Some of you guys might be wondering why I have a green boat. My normal boat, my red one, is in the shop, just getting some uh, finishing touches done up. So they gave me a loaner. This is a swift pack boat, just like mine, an Adirondack 13.6 Kevlar Fusion. 26 pounds, so I'm able to portage relatively easy and maneuver very easy too. I'm gonna get my boat all set up for my six day trip and head on out because it is storming. It's been storming all morning. I have a tiny break in the weather right now, but uh, there's a 100% chance of thunderstorms today. But we have to start today. All right, the rain's starting to come down. I gotta put this DSLR away, pack up the rest of my boat and get in the boat. I'll be shooting with my GoPro probably for the rest of the day. And if you want to find out about my eye, my black eye, stay tuned. I'll tell you about it one night uh, around the fire. Okay, it's four degrees right now, four degrees Celsius. It's cold. I gotta put on my gloves actually. I've got these neoprene gloves I have to wear probably all today. I'm hoping to get a few hours good paddle before the thunder storms if they come before the rain starts coming heavy man this wind I'm going right into a headwind this is the first time I've paddled all year and I'm pretty exhausted and tired out already and I've only been paddling for a few minutes but such is life such as the beginning of every canoe trip especially at the beginning of the season you really don't have your sea legs, you don't have all that energy, that muscle memory that I had at the end of last year's canoe season. But I'm looking forward for the challenge, paddling every day, catching trout. Oh yes, will I be catching trout. It's a little wet, might be a little, a little rainy, a little wet today. Man, I haven't seen any thunder or heard any lightning or vice versa. If that does happen, you bet I'm getting off the water, tucking up into the shore somewhere. Well, I have pulled off to the side here because I'm hungry and thirsty and I'm about to run this bend and go into the wind again and if I tried to do this out there I'd get blown all around so I gotta get my my water filtration system out which is in my pocket and the filter itself so you guys have seen me use this before basically this allows me to not have to carry water with me that water's so cold well that was good I can keep my water in here, drink it as I go, refill it as I go. Getting these gloves back on is difficult. They're very tight and wet. I've been going for just over an hour. And that was the first time I stopped for any reason. So, just getting good distance, putting good time in. I've got like six hours to paddle today. So I gotta get a move on. Look at the baby 
little beaver dodgy. So cute. This is potentially a dangerous situation here. I'm by myself, I have to paddle all day to get to the campsite um, in order to keep my track for the rest of the week. I don't want to get off track and start falling behind. It's raining, it's four degrees Celsius, it's going to rain all day. What I have done to ensure that I'll be all right is that I've packed on the clothes underneath my, my rain gear here. I have long johns, pants, then rain pants, uh, long underwear shirt, shirt, wool, and then my rain jacket. The only thing I haven't put on yet, and then I have neoprene socks, neoprene gloves, and shoes. The only thing I haven't put on yet is my toque, because I do want to save that for the camp. And my ears are fine right now, this hood is protecting me. But if I start to shiver, if I start to not be able to control myself, what is that? Then uh, I'll have to stop. I'll have to stop for the day and um, set up my tarp and hunker down and try and get some wood. What is this? Dead goose? Oh, no, very much alive. Very much pissed off at me. <laughs> All right, we'll leave you alone. I thought it was dead. Anyways, and then I've got clean clothes to dry into, <laughs> clean dry clothes to change into uh, when I do get to camp. Another set of long johns, a thin, thin pair of pants, and then I have my Primloft jacket, and then a down vest. I don't have an extra shirt. If my shirt gets wet, that's fine. I'll just wear my jacket and my, and my vest and my wind shirt. So, got all my bases covered. Finally at the first portage. This portage is very small, less than 200 meters, so I'm not going to single carry. I am going to double carry. Hello, upside down. Hopefully, I can fix that in post. There we go. I'll come back for all my gear, and then I'm going to do some fishing. I am set up for single carry, but it's just not necessary right now. Tons of moose poop on this trail. My obsession with moose poop continues. First cast of my trout fishing trip. I'm going to catch a trout right now. I swear to God, I just had a beautiful brook trout on shore. It, it, I lost him. It, it kicked, spit out my line, and flopped back into the water. It was the most ungraceful thing I've ever done. I feel like a dummy. It was a gorgeous, big, speckled trout, brook trout. And now he won't bite again. I only got two bites. I got him on the third. He bought, bit twice, didn't get him on, got him on the third, and now he won't bite again. He's, he's, he's on to me. I'm very bummed out. <laughs> First time fishing here in this spot uh, for the trip and I got one. And I didn't get it on film and he got away. And you don't believe me, do you? Dam crossing. I'm gonna fish here too. Well, it's not so dark out right now. The rain has stopped for a minute at least. I see my portage up a couple hundred meters in front of me. It is a 1300 meter portage, one kilometer, 300 meters. So it's nothing short, not the longest one either, but I will be single carrying, so I'll have to rig up my boat to carry everything at once. Well, hello. Can you see me? Clean you up a bit. Ah, okay, here we go. 13 kilometer, 1300 kilometer, 1300 meter portage. 
not 1,300 kilometers. Oh, I joed it up. I pulled the Joe. Pulled the Joe. There we go. Okay, you guys ready for this? So the way the weather has played out, I had two real crappy days to begin with. I had two really nice days in the middle and two crappy days to end with. So I'm fine with that. Those two nice days in the middle are going to be glorious, even more so. this why would I have put the camera on for this right there's nothing special here I can just catch a trout this guy's tiny probably one eighth the size of the first one I caught but I'm happy I'm happy I got a speck it's pretty well that was cool hopefully next time I will be able to get it on film the actual catching of the trout. I let that guy go. He's just a touch too small. He, uh, he wouldn't have been a meal on his own. I tried casting a few more times and didn't get another bite. So threw him back. And uh, yeah, it's, it's no big deal. I have six days to catch them and eat them. I think I will be, uh, I'll be doing all right. This is just like in a creek here. I didn't even fish. This isn't a rapid yet. So... At camp finally. I couldn't film when I got here. It was just raining. I had to get stuff all squared away. This fire is taking quite some time to get ready as well. It's gonna be dark any minute. I'm gonna cook my food on the fire tonight. I'm gonna have some rehydrated spaghetti. I need to get dry, get warm by the fire, and go to sleep. I was lucky. I found a huge sheet of birch bark laying on the trail. So I was able to use that to start the fire. I still have this much left. Save that in case I need it. Um, I've made the fire just on the outside of my tarp so I can sit here, try to get warm. Oh man, I am exhausted. Today was a nine hour uh, travel day. And probably seven hours of that was in decent rain. Oh, it's hard to think right now. Already got some river water in there. Do up my spaghetti. Maybe I'll be able to think after that. We got one and a half servings of spaghetti, and I'm going to eat it all. So I just fill it up. Actually, that's probably about perfect. All that water is going to absorb and evaporate. Starting to feel like a human again, like a human being. These pants are soaked. I had my long johns underneath them and my rain pants over top and everything is soaked all the way through. My crotch, my underwear, everything. So I'm gonna sit here, try and dry off a little bit by the fire and then change before it gets too dark. I'm gonna eat up my homemade dehydrated spaghetti. Look how good that looks. Look how good that looks right now. Mm. I've been putting my pieces of wood because I don't have many, putting them by the fire to dry as the fire burns. I'm going to have to go and try and get try and get more wood, but I walked quite a ways couldn't find much it's all alder 
and spruce here and the alder is garbage and the spruce is soaked through. I was able to find one decent spruce that wasn't and that's how I got the fire started. Sitting as close to the fire I'm able to get uh, fire warming me and drying my clothes and here you can see just how much steam is coming off my pants right now. I think if I sit by the fire for a while I'll be able to dry these out. Glad I brought this sleeping bag liner. The sleeping bag is a negative one Celsius rating, and tomorrow night it's going to get down to negative one. So it's okay, but with this extra little poly sheet in there, I'll be golden. This is a marmot quark. Q U A R K. This is my second time using it. Camp next to this awesome waterfall, a bunch of rapids, very scenic, and you would expect trout to be in there. I would expect trout to be in here. I've been casting every now and then since I've got to this campsite. I haven't got a bite, not even a nibble. It is pretty shallow. I keep bringing up weeds when I pull it in, but I thought for sure I'd get some fish here. It's uh. surprising that I didn't but oh well I'll show you what I'm using for a lure this is what I caught both those trout on today it's a EGB lure this is a small one actually it's a one size up from the smallest I have smaller and I have bigger these things are the jam for trout the jam brought the original blue foam pad the old beast this has been used as a yoke pad before that's why there's tape on it but uh, this thing does a better job than anything else for fanning the fire it has to be blue that's part of it part of its magic blue foam pad the origin of the blue foam pad was a uh, to use for a seat for backpacking and I cut it out of a puzzle piece like a kids foam f puzzle piece floor I got a bunch of them I got a bunch of smoke in my eye too ah, I'm a freaking sight man look at me black eye and all alright so I want to go through my map just so I have an idea of tomorrow maybe I'll give you guys an idea of what I've done today here we are, this is the western map from Algonquin. All right, so today I paddled from here, I put in here, and I paddled all the way to here, to the second campsite, the second black campsite. So I traveled that distance today, and that was, got it written down here, that was 20 kilometers. Uh, tomorrow, and for first uh, paddle of the year, tomorrow, I don't have that far. I think I only have 12 kilometers to go. Tomorrow's my shortest day. So I'll be, I'll be able to fish tomorrow quite a bit more. So from here to here tomorrow is my distance. So you can really see from here to here is like not even half as much as from what I did today. But in this, this is a meandering creek, uh, meandering river. It just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Instead of going on a straight line, I'm literally zigzagging the whole way. So like I said, I'm in Algonquin Park. I'm in the West Persian, per Persian. The West Persian of the park, barb. Um, west portion of the park to do fishing. This is the reason I've come here, because this is the, the fishing trip that I've wanted to do. So 
Yeah, day one. Day one was a uh, nine-hour day. It was a rough day, but I'm glad it was day one. Now everything should be on the up. Go through the rough stuff at first, right, Kyle? <laughs> Uh, tomorrow's gonna rain again, but it's okay. It's gonna be a little bit colder tomorrow. Uh, if I'm being totally honest with you, it's warmed up right now. Um, I'm not cold at all. Everything's drying out. Uh, I haven't switched out any clothes at all, really. I've just taken off a couple layers and let the fire and the air dry myself myself out. Uh, it looks a lot lighter than it is in the tar in the camera. The tarp is uh, pretty light behind me here, but I got my canoe right there. It's my wind block against the river. I got my tarp here with the overhang. And this is what I'll be sleeping in uh, for the six days I'm out here. Maybe different configurations, but I didn't bring a tent. There's no need for a tent. There's no bugs. So um, yeah, a tarp is more versatile and I do like to use a tarp when I can. So at that time, a little airplane Jack Daniels courtesy of buddy Stan. Thanks man. Cheers. Tastes like Jack Daniels. Fire flame spitter. Floss sticks for the win. I brought a small toothbrush and toothpaste as well but like on the go my crappy teeth have holes in them. Plastic. These are reusable. I'll, I'll have this for the whole week. This one, if I don't lose it, I've lost things before, <laughs> once or twice. So I've got my pants off, dance off pants off. Sitting here, in my long johns. These are my wet long johns that I uh, wore all day. They're almost dry by the fire. My pants are 90% dry, which is awesome. That means I don't have to put on cold, wet pants tomorrow morning, and I don't have to pack these because these are my bigger pair of pants. My other pair of pants is super small nylon. Um, so I was worried that I might have to pack these away where my other pants, because these are bigger and I don't want to carry them. But I have dried them out very well. So I'm not too concerned. Just near the, uh, the, the pant legs where the cuffs are because they have this elastic in them are a little bit damp. And then the butt, because it has this double material here, is a little damp. Nobody wants a cold, damp butt. So I think I'll continue to dry out the bum bum. Uh, yeah, I don't even think I need to change in my other long johns. I'm gonna sleep with these on and then dry them out with my body heat in the tent in the sleeping bag because uh, it's only supposed to get down to like what four or five tonight. So that sleeping bag will be more than sufficient. Fire's dying down. I'm just laying in my sleeping bag here. I think I'm gonna hit the hay. Just close my eyes and relax. I'll probably get up really early and start on my day two tomorrow. Day two will have more fishing. Day two will be eating fish. <laughs> Good night, guys. Good morning, folks. I had a great night's sleep. I slept for eight hours. Uh, it started thunderstorming in the middle of the night, so I had to get up and uh, set the tarp up in a little bit better configuration, pull it down almost like an A-frame which worked fine um, and then uh, what actually woke me up this morning I was laying here sleeping and I heard grunting like two big loud grunts and I didn't know what it was I whipped my head around and literally three feet from my head two baby otter were playing with each other rolling around on the ground and grunting literally like wrestling it was really really cool I unfortunately did not know what it was at first and was woken up and startled and kind of went Wah! It scared them off, <laughs> but I still got to see them, and it was very cool. I wish I hadn't have been startled and could watch them longer, but I was so startled. I don't know. We'll see about day two. It's not looking promising right now. It's uh, it's windy and it's colder than it was yesterday, but that's okay. I got to get up. I got to get some uh, wood split up. I kept some dry wood underneath my tarp here last night. I've just got to cut it into very small pieces to use my uh, twig stove.
I'm not leaving my hand there any time. I'm not chopping with my hand there. I'm trying to avoid accidents as much as possible on this trip, being solo for so long. These will burn really well in my twig stove. I got some birch bark saved up from yesterday as well. Slugs everywhere. I uh, found a bunch of wolf poop yesterday and there was a ton of slugs all over it. I guarantee when I lift up my sleeping bag and pad and all that, there's gonna be slugs all in the bottom. Slugs! So I got my birch bark from yesterday and my Snow Peak 900 pot, it's titanium. And I also have my Bush Buddy Ultra, which is very thin stainless steel and a fantastic stove. This is a gasifier. It burns the smoke uh, twice. Bushcraft. Well, for breakfast on this trip, I'm just doing oatmeal. I don't like to do just bars in the morning. I actually like to have like a hot meal and anything else is too much weight, too much effort in my opinion for what I want to do. So oatmeal in its own packet with a spoon, super easy, super sluggy. Oh, I'm chilled. I am chilled. I love waking up to that sound. I'm not sure what kind of bird that is. I don't know what it is. Cheers. Mmm. Joke meal. Nice and sticky to the ribs. Well, I packed mostly everything up. I just got uh, a couple things, my tripod, my camera, but it's starting to sprinkle. So again, I'm gonna put this DSLR away, use my GoPro uh, for when I'm in the canoe. I'm hoping tomorrow I'll be able to use my DSLR in the, in the canoe too. Here I go. Should have been there. I should have been catching some trout there. I hope I'm not going to regret letting that trout go. <laughs> that second trout. It's hard because, like yesterday, for example, it was raining. I knew I had to do a few more portages, and it was small. It would have been a different story if I kept, if I was able to hold on to that big first one I caught. Um, it was worth portaging with or, or stopping and cooking. The small one just wasn't. And I tried to catch other ones when I caught the small one to like make a meal out of it and I couldn't. But if I get skunked now, <laughs> oh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be familiar territory. Here comes the rain. I was hoping there for a minute it was going to pass. No such luck. Oh, 
These neoprene gloves are a lifesaver. They're very cold right now, but they will warm up. Okay, there's some rapids right here. I have to put in, there's rapids right away. This should be fun. Now we fish. I've come to a portage. There's blow down everywhere. It's hard to get to it. But I think I might be able to run it, run these rapids. It's only a small, like, 100 meter portage. And I think I'm going to scope it out. I don't want to get myself into any kind of danger, break my boat or anything like that. But I think I can run them. From what I can see here, it's definitely doable. I just want to make sure at the end, I'm not going to get into some rapids or some waterfall or something. Well, there's nowhere to fish at the end. I can't get down to the actual river because it's so swollen up. So it's coming out into the woods. Um, but I am going to run it. So I'm gonna strap everything in and uh, wish me luck, I'm excited. Got my fishing rod strapped in. My yoke is tied in. I'll be wearing my gloves, holding my paddle. My bag will float, my paddle will float. I can float. Thanks to the PFD, <laughs> but I'm not going in. Let's do this. was a lot tamer than I had thought. <laughs> a little bit tamer than I had hoped as well. But still fun nonetheless. I just checked my map and it uh, seems like I'll be coming up to a campsite on my left on the river up here probably in about half an hour. So I think what I'm going to do if it's not occupied is I'm going to stop for a little bit, have a lunch, maybe go poop and uh, just hang out there for a little bit because I'm cruising today. I'm going with the current and I'm only doing half of what just a little over half what I did yesterday. So I'm almost done for the day, I think. Um, that, maybe that's an overstatement, but I'm almost halfway there. So I'm not in any kind of rush. The fishing is not hot today. I, ha I did a bunch of research before coming here, and it seems like trout are very susceptible to weather. Um, so maybe it's the rain. I don't know, man. Maybe it's just the overcast two days in a row. What really sucks is I'm on this river right now, and this is the hot spot for the trout, and I'm getting off of it tomorrow. There's still opportunities to catch fish, just not as good as this river. And nothing today. I've been getting skunked. But such is such is Joe's life.
I'm stopped at this campsite. I had a glorious poop. I fished a, a bunch, um, and then I was about to eat my lunch, and I said, screw it, I'll try again. So I got a little brookie, but I want to try to get a couple more because this is not going to be a full meal. But regardless, um, I'm eating this guy. I'm not <laughs> letting it go to chance again. So nice little brookie. And uh, yeah, hopefully, I've already dispatched them. Hopefully I can get another one. Cross your fingers, guys. This guy's tiny, tiny, tiny. Again on the EGB lure. Third, third trout, third fish, EGB lure. It was, uh, the sun had come out for a minute. There was some blue sky. That's when I got the bite, the trout. So I'm wondering if there is a huge correlation to sunlight uh, and trout in this time of year, which is spring. I know in the summertime they're hiding from it, but maybe right now they're looking for it. Maybe right now they're only active when it comes out. I'm really not sure. Huh. Well, I'm gonna get this guy gutted out. Get a, uh, probably fire my twig stove going and uh, grill him up. While I'm doing that, I'll still continue to fish. Am I in focus? Am I in focus? Hello. I'm excited. I'm very excited for this. Grab a big chunk. She's toasty still. Toasty. Okay, I ended up cutting it up a little bit just so it cooked even. But I got some uh, fish crisp on there. I'm leaving the skin on because it's trout. She's hot. Wow. I could handle that. I could handle that. Oh my goodness. Success, as small as it may be. <laughs> There'll be more fish, more fish on this trip. That was super good. Very happy to have that trout in my belly, and it's been holding off. The weather's been pretty decent actually the whole time I've been at this campsite. This campsite is a uh, is very nice, and I'm I'm glad I stayed here. But now it's getting super dark again. I know it's just how it is today. It's gonna continue doing this, but I think I'm gonna get going. Oh, I think I'm gonna get going here. My uh, my campsite for tonight is maybe only a couple hours off. Cruising. Lots of bends. Tons of twists and turns. So I'm constantly rounding corners, but with the uh, the current going the same way as me or I'm going the same way as the current, it's fun. Kinda really get some momentum going. Make up for that time that I spent at that camp. I must have been at that camp for an hour and a half. That was a really nice spot. If it, was, if it wasn't so close to my previous camp where I started out today, I would have liked to stay there. Fishing from shore, decent size site. My site last night was garbage. There's no getting around it. It was on the side of a river. And I had to switch over to the other side because it had flooded where the uh, the normal site was. So. But it's springtime, lots of rains, so that's expected. There's just an impenetrable jungle of alders all next to me, in front of me. Beside me, behind me. It's 
crazy to think of that just on this one stretch of this one river in Ontario, there's probably a billion alders. Imagine the rest of the world. Imagine the rest of Canada. There's lots of trees, folks. And a spot of water right on my lens. Ah. I hear some rapids. I'm winding my way over to them. Ooh. See, now I'm going completely the opposite way that I was going before. Now I'm into the wind because the river is just so windy. The river's so swollen that it's, uh, it's kind of difficult to navigate. There's all these offshoots now, and uh, things that would normally be under uh, over, over the water are underwater. So I just gotta be really careful picking my way through here, making sure I'm staying with the current, making sure I'm looking for landmarks and reading my map. I do have my compass too, but I don't wanna break it out if I don't have to. Like this, exactly like this. Do I go this way? <laughs> Old Joe, he's not the best with directions, is he? <laughs> Single carry time. Gotta go around a set of rapids. I went up to check if I could run them, but they look way too dangerous. Way too raging to try on my own. In the middle of a 800 meter portage, thought I'd cast the line in. I got a tiny little brookie. This guy's definitely going back. This is even smaller than the uh, one I got earlier. So, I'm glad I'm catching them though. That's okay. I'll, I'm happy with catching them. So that's number four. Oh, I hooked myself. Wah, wah. Number four, if that counts. <laughs> Hello, I am on a 2700 meter portage. When I got to the start of the portage, I really, really needed to walk. Again, like I was saying, my toes were numb. I literally couldn't feel them. So I loaded up my, just my backpack and ran with it for probably a kilometer. And then I came back, I jogged back to get my canoe. I haven't seen any uh, moose or bear. Plenty of moose sign. And normally when I'm here in Algonquin, I do see moose. Last year, I saw 12 in three days, something along those lines. I wouldn't mind seeing a bear on the Portage Trail here, but I think with all the talking I'm doing, it's probably slim to know. Oh, I sunk. I sunk. Oh. There is the cold reminder. Man, it is ice. So, I have to cross a river. <laughs> this sucks. That water is a foot deep. Easy. Try and go on this fallen log here. There's root systems. Uh, okay, okay, we got this. We got this. Come on. Yep. That happened. That was a haul. It took me a couple hours. And at the end there, it was so wet on the Portage Trail that I literally paddled through the Portage Trail. Craziness. Back at the river now. Welcome to Camp 2, or as it's been dubbed, Camp Poo. Let me show you why.
Moose poop. 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 Right where I wanted to put my tarp. Moose poop. Moose poop. I don't think I need to keep saying it, but that's a big pile. Oh, look. And if you look, you can see that this is all moose brows here uh, on these balsams. They've been stripped by mooses. Um, way more sign of the moose poop than the, than the wolf, but I'm not concerned about that. It's just lots of poo. <laughs> so it's getting pretty windy. I gotta set up my tarp shelter. I have to get firewood. Yeah. Oh, and hope it doesn't rain anymore. It's a good site though, and I'm right next to the river. Well, here it is. It's a little bit different than last night's setup. <clears throat> the ground is super uneven. There's rocks everywhere, but that's the case for here. I can't find one flat spot. So I'm going to have a little bit more protection from the wind and the rain with this setup. The only problem is now I'm kind of out in the elements for my fire tonight. I do have a secondary tarp, that uh, 5x7, that I've been using for my floor. That it was last night I did, but I could probably string that up. But it is raining now, I can hear it. So I gotta get a move on. We got a score on some birch bark, tons of it. And then I got about five or six spruce trees. I have the camera underneath the tarp right now. I strung up my five by seven so I could sit under it and uh, have a fire tonight. But I gotta cut up this wood, obviously. Broke my saw. It's dry. That's good.
I've spent some time splitting up the driest wood that I could find, making some feathers on there, and also collecting damp twigs. There's my birch bark. Not, you don't need to mess around with the fire steel. There's no uh, plain bushcraft out here in the rain. This is real life. Later every time. Obviously, if that lighter fails, I do have my fire steel as a backup. In fact, two fire steels actually as a backup. That birch bark, man. Not too shabby, boys and girls. I'm happy with that, man. Take about 20, 20 minutes, a half an hour to prepare, and then less than a minute to ignite and have a sustainable fire. I am very happy with that one. doing chili tonight <laughs> mix it up you know another red meal instead of spaghetti <laughs> all red all the time this is a one and a half serving as well one and a half Joe servings oh lots of water in that one she'll have to sit for a while <laughs> I got a little table no peasant life for Joe. What up, Mike? I don't even know if Mike watches my videos anymore. Oh, the shiner's dwindling. She's dwindling. Okay. Good food. Cheers, guys. Guest star. I dropped the gun. It's a reoccurring theme. I'm just so hungry. I didn't see anyone today at all. Yesterday I saw a couple, like a man and wife, and then I saw a solo guy at a real remote site, but we didn't talk. He was at his site, I paddled by, just waved, he waved back. Um, I was kind of thinking I would see him today somewhere, but I haven't, I haven't seen anyone today at all. Raining again. It's like this light drizzle, but it won't stop. I'm really hoping tomorrow is going to be a, good, a nice, like, uh, clear day. No more rain. No more rain for a couple days. And get into the trout a little bit more, hopefully. I fished a lot today. I didn't film at all. I fished a whole lot. Um, yeah, in places, because I know I didn't have to travel far. So it took me a little bit longer to get here to the site because I was fishing so often. But uh, yeah, man, I don't know if it's the weather or if it's my Joe luck or the combination of the two, but you saw what I got today. I ate that one for lunch, that little tiny guy. 
Mm. I got two today. Both small. The second one was super small. Still a lump there. You guys want to know what happened to my face? Why I have a black eye? I have a neighbor. Let's just call this neighbor person. So person's teenage daughter was yelling at my five-year-old daughter. I took my niece, my two nieces and my daughter to, to the ice cream store to get ice cream. We walked there. It was Saturday night, seven o'clock at night. And we're walking there, the same walk that I do all the time. And all of a sudden I hear, shut the hell up. I'm like, what? They can't be talking to us. It was coming from the backyard of a house. And it was like a teenage girl. So again, I just keep walking or whatever. I, I look and then I, they can't be talking to us. So I, I keep walking and then they say, yeah, that's right. Keep walking. Stop looking. Keep your, get your dog and go. And I say, what? And they go, you heard me. Stop looking here. Get your dog and go. I said, I look because you said shut the hell up. I said, you're telling three girls under the age of 10 to shut the hell up. I said, get real. Exact words. Get real. Fast forward two days later, Monday. We walk him over to the bus stop. My wife and I. And as we're walking home, uh, we're walking past said house. And person opens the door. And I say to person, person. Your teenage daughter was yelling at my five-year-old and two nieces to shut the hell up for no reason. And person says, Why didn't you come tell me when it happened? All like super aggressive, angry. My wife could not believe it. I could not believe it. So I'm like, excuse me? I wasn't trying to provoke the situation. I was trying to let it go. I had three little girls with me. I didn't want to knock on your door. I saw you, so I'm mentioning it. I, I'm not angry. I just, as a parent, would like to know if Emerald did that. So I, here you go. And uh, Person was not happy about that. And Person called my wife a and said that Person was going to beat my wife with a bat. And Person lives three or four, four hours down from me. I could not let that happen. So I walked up to Person. I said, you do not threaten my wife like that person says leave or I'm going to hit you with a baseball bat I said no you're not person swings at me th four times I block it three times with my arm I block the baseball bat for the fourth time with my face I called the police on person I did not raise my hand to person I did not do anything else to person I called the police and person that's it I don't know I haven't talked to the police. I haven't talked to person. I haven't. I've seen person. Person is still around. Um, yeah. So, assault with a deadly weapon, though, straight up. Hit me here, where you can see it. The uh, the lump, and then my my eye got black. It was like, boom, up into here, all green and everything. What's concerning me is I never went to go get this checked out because I feel fine. But this bump is not going away. I feel like I have some scar tissue or something there. But whatever. We're moving. Uh, I'm done dealing with this garbage. I'm done traveling five to ten hours for camping trips. I'm done dealing with ghetto bull crap from peoples and persons. We're moving. That's the story of the black eye. I'm not letting it affect the way that I live, where I live now, but I couldn't, I can't lie, I can't say that it, it wasn't the last straw, it wasn't the, the icing on the cake. Alright guys, it's almost 9 o'clock, i got nothing else to do. It's raining out there, so I think I'm just going to turn in. Uh, I'm nice and comfortable in my sleeping bag in here. I've got everything dry, all, myself's all covered up, myself's all covered up. <laughs> Good night, guys. Pray for sun in the morning, please. I love a sunrise. Ugh. Good morning. 
Well, that was a cold, wet night. That had to have gotten down past negative one degree Celsius. Uh, I had to put on all my layers inside my sleeping bag. It rained, it stormed all night. I was really, really, really hoping to wake up to a sunrise, but no such luck. The wind is howling, it's been still drizzly, the sky's gray. So, my two days of good weather in the middle may not be two days of good weather. I really, really hope things turn around. It'd be nice to see some sunlight. I really, uh, I really want to see some sun on this trip. So, I'm just uh, huddled in my shelter here. It's about 6.09. So, I slept last night from 9 o'clock and, and I got up at 5 but I did not sleep all the way through. It was a very broken sleep. Um, yeah, so just gonna make up some oatmeal before I get going for the day. I think I'm gonna have some tea as well. I have some uh, Korean ginseng tea. I'm gonna try that, never tried that before. That's from Buddy Stan. What's that I see? Is there some blue sky out there? Let's go check her out, guys. Oh. Well, that blue sky's there. But the uh, the wind's there, too. Oh, man, they're cruising. Look at those clouds. There's black clouds and white clouds cruising. Getting along harmoniously. Black and white. All right, uh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta start my day. Uh, my feet are pretty numb. I have to keep putting these uh, wet neoprene socks on. And then obviously my shoes are soaked as well. But, blue skies. Blue skies are always good. See, I switched up my shelter last night before I went to bed. I stretched out the tarp over top of the canoe. And I got a lot more room that way. And then the water shed down off the canoe. Stretched it out back here. Pegged it down. And this corner, instead of being pegged to the ground, got stretched way over there. And I just got so much more room in there. This is a really good setup. Well, it was definitely cold last night. This is ice. So my tarp is way more wet than it was yesterday, and it probably weighs two times the amount. It literally weighs two times the amount it does when it's dry. Lots of water weight is soaking wet. My ground tarp is soaking wet as well. I don't want to get all my stuff in my dry bag wet, hence the dry bag. So I packed a small garbage bag with me. I'm just going to use it as a buffer or a liner uh, between my wet stuff and my dry stuff. I don't even have to put my wet stuff in this. Just, just put it as a layer in between. We're off. This is the first time I've been able to have the DSLR in the uh, in the boat. Oh, glorious sun! Oh man, she's out. She's out, boys and girls. <sighs> Thank God, finally. I think I'm gonna try and fish in here. A little bit. I couldn't fish from my boat last night because I had to use my paddles for my shelter. 
But uh, yeah, let's get some fishing do. Let's get some fishing doing. I've switched to a Black Fury number one, mainly because I lost my EGB. I have a bigger one, but I figure I'll try this guy out. I did try it. I was switching up all all day yesterday, but no luck except for the EGBs. And my sunglasses today. That's not. Not a bad thing. I was told that if it's too cold in the morning, it might not be a good time to fish for the trout. Maybe to wait till later on in the day and the sun's warmed up a little bit. But it can't hurt. I'm clipping along here pretty good. I'm not even paddling. There's so much current right there. Those oh, spruce trees looking heavenly behind me. The birds are singing. It's going to be a good day. I have a really big portage to do uh, really soon. Like two kilometer portage. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. My feet are numb from putting these uh, frozen neoprene socks on, like I was saying. Today's by far the coldest day. I'm super happy it's not raining. Because this temperature mixed with rain would be horrible. I'm freezing as it is. Can you see this log jam? I'm in the middle of a river on a log, standing on these floating logs. And I gotta get all my canoe and all my gear past all those logs. <laughs> Gotta get past this one little last bit. Ooh. This is crazy. Crazy. It'd be a different story if it was not early spring. One more lift over. Oh, she is not stable. Oh, man. Wow. See the finish line. She's not stable. She's not stable. Oh, my God.
rolling. Oh, this is so sketchy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, man. I'm so glad I didn't have to do that in the rain. Oh man, if this would have been yesterday or the day before, that would have been a hundred times worse. Look at that. She's a rough one, man. I think I might have gone through that one with Kyle. He got making fun of him for how uncoordinated he was. <laughs> oh. I'm super glad to have that over with. I thought I was biting, uh, going in a couple times. There's nowhere to pull over for a long time. And all that's next to me is these alders, as you can see. Super hungry. So, I did my backpack in the boat, got my food out, and made a sandwich. All while move, drifting down the river. It was... Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a finesse. Hard to talk. My brain is going to mush for some reason out here. Only three days. This happens. Uh, canoe brain portaging and going, going, going. You get kind of dumb when you try to talk. And since I've already have that problem, since I already have that problem, you can imagine. This is going down really good. Cheese, mustard, German salami, and flatbread. Cheers. What's up, big guy? You don't gotta go anywhere. I'm not gonna hurt you. Okay, this is really, really cool. Wrap it there. Oh, somebody had to have put it here. There's a moose skull. Yeah, somebody put it there. Must be a portage marker because this is the portage here. Big animals. Oh, it's heavy too. Holy, stuck on there good. Okay, I gotta gotta get it on my boat now, I guess. <laughs> River's getting a bit mundane. I'll be excited to get on some open water. What is that? Big old bird. Turkey vulture. I'll be excited to get on the open water and some lakes. Uh, every campsite I've been at has been, well, both campsites I've been at has been at a rapid or a waterfall. So it's really noisy. I'm looking forward to some silence, to an open lake, maybe a still night where I can go paddle around the the lake on a still night. Should be off this river today, today or tomorrow, depending. I just did a 1300 meter portage around High Falls, and it was rough. It was up and down, and lots of blowdown, lots of trees in the way. Um, I'm, I'm running on empty here. I, uh, I can't lie, I hit a brick wall today. My guts are acting up, and it's draining me mentally and physically. I'm almost at camp. 
today's been a 30, almost a 30 kilometer day. I have a 1900 meter portage to do now, like any second. So I just did a 1300 meter, now I have a 1900. And then I'm on, I'm off the river, and onto a lake for the night, which is nice. I hope to get there with enough time to still um, dry out some stuff in the sunlight. Whole ass over there now. Can you hear the peepers? This is the first time I've heard them on this trip. It's getting super loud now. The sun feels nice, man. I'm very warm. This is brutal. I'm about halfway through. I had to drop my bag. It's all uphill. I'm out of water. Well, I'm not out of water. There's no water around. So, I dropped my bag. I'm going to finish the rest. Ah. <sighs> Of this uphill portage chug some water at the end and come back for my bag but this is definitely adding time which doesn't really matter too much as long as I get there uh, by five or so I do want to try to dry out my gear it's super heavy in my backpack and yeah, my sleeping bags a little wet so it'd be nice to hang it up Get air dried and sun dried. Oh man, she's rough. She's a rough one, bud. Home is just over there. I am done. Done for the day. Super happy to be on a lake proper. Ooh, an even better sight. I see an even better sight. Going to that one. Home. Finally, I met up with a fellow canoeist. Uh, he's doing a solo, 12 day, uh, two weeks, 14 days. That's what two weeks is, 14 days, if you didn't know. Uh, yeah, so I stopped to talk to him for about a half an hour. He had some cool stories, and uh, maybe I'll talk about it after. But right now, I really need to dry stuff out because it's almost six o'clock. It's windy, I'm losing light, and I'd love for my stuff to be dried out by bedtime. So I'm going to hang up a uh, clothesline and let this stuff air dry. How nice. Batteries in the middle of Uncle Park. I'll be packing these out with me. There we are, completely dry in like five minutes. So I'm gonna set up back up in here. There's a level spot right there on that level spot. Go from that tree to that stump. There we go. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Take you, make you have you have you a look inside. Nice and flat. Probably the flattest spot that I've had so far. At the back, you can see 
I tucked in the corners. There's only that tiny little gap at the end as opposed to an A-frame. And then I can use that to lay on as well, part of my ground sheet. Ooh. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm starving and my brain is dead. I gotta get some wood. can't see if I'm in frame uh, I can't tell it's too bright I got pretty lucky with um, wood collection this is a big old fat uh, fat wood from a stump I got a bunch of them it's all red pine here I feel like TA outdoors here but uh, I figure because I'm pretty warm because it's a nice night I think that I will eat my food uh, cook my rice I'm just having rice tonight I was planning on having rice and fish <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll cook my rice Real quick, eat it up, and then go out and fish. And then if I do catch something, I can um, I can have that fish for a later snack. Um, but yeah, rice tonight anyway. Other than that, where's my lid? Where's my lid? So this is probably the easiest wood collection so far at this site. Okay, so I haven't used this yet. I've been just using my Sawyer Squeeze, but I got my pristine drops. You put five, five of part A, five of part B. You let it sit for five minutes till it turns yellow like Gatorade. Pour it in. I like to give a little safety rinse. You gotta do this carefully so you don't spill it. And now that's gotta sit for half an hour takes a little bit but my Sawyer uh, I'll have to I have to back flush it I haven't back flushed it yet I brought the, the syringe just haven't had time Give that a little shake okay so in a half an hour my rice is good Wish I had fish to go with it, but maybe I can do that after. So I um I mentioned that I stopped and talked with a gentleman. What's going on? Sorry. There we are. I stopped and talked with a spoke with a gentleman um right after the 1900 meter portage. I actually saw his bags on the trail and I left my canoe there uh, to go back to meet him up. And by the time I got back, he was gone. He says he comes and does this trip every year. Or he's done it a bunch of years. And this is the least amount of fish that he's caught. Trout. We're talking trout. I'm not going for bass or anything like that. So, he came in on Friday. I came in on Monday. So, he's a full three days ahead of me. We came in the same spot. He's doing... We came... We accessed at the same spot. He's doing two weeks... And I already caught up to him, but that's because he's going slow. We're just two different kinds of, of uh, paddlers. Not not that one's cooler or better than the other. He's taking his time. He's living life out here slow, two weeks, which I envy. Um, but to do my loop, the one that I wanted to do to get on, to get on the fish, to get in the, in the rivers and get on the fish, I had to do this um, six-day loop where I'm just putting in tons of kilometers every day. I can't be gone for two weeks. I just can't. It was so hot. I tried to get him to say it on film, but he didn't want to be on film. Um, he says that this year is the least productive for trout that, it, that it's been. So as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, thank God. Like, I'm so happy to hear you say that. He was saying the same thing. There's just so much water, so much um, swellage of the rivers that they're just not... It's impossible to fish one. Like, at the ends of the rapids, the water is just rushing by. The fish aren't biting, it's just swollen up. Uh, he says we're even too early for the lake trout. He, he, he said uh, next week will be when the lake trout come out. Who knows, he's just guessing obviously, but he's been here since Friday. He has, he's only caught 11 fish. Normally he catches like 20 fish a day. 
um, but no Lakers. So, yeah, unseasonably cold right now. Anyways, I'm glad to hear him say that because coming from him, an older dude who obviously knows what he's doing, he's out for two, out here for two weeks, does this all the time. I, like, makes sense that what he says. Make man, I can't talk. Guy that comes here all the time is doing poorly at fishing. So it's a little bit more of a, a relief knowing that I'm not just sucking horribly. I'm sure that's still the case. I've only caught, I caught four fish in the first two days. He caught 11 since Friday. So he's like three days up on me. He said he even kept, can, didn't, didn't catch anything yesterday. Uh, he was dealing with all the rain and everything too. So, oh, excuse me. Anyways, who knows? This is a lake now instead of the river. So I'm gonna fish this after I'm done eating and maybe I'll get some luck here. Um, hopefully the wind dies down too. Okay, supper was awesome actually. Just that rice was really good. Um, I found this old deer bone or moose bone, and I'm go. I need to hang up my bear my food <clears throat> my bear bag before I go fishing. So I'm going to hook this over a tree. I'm gonna hook it, hook it real good. Bit close to the tree. You want to get it away from the trunk as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, I should probably do. Well, that'll work. It's not an ideal hang, if I'm being honest. There's limbs near it, but it'll be all right. Anything has to walk past me to get next to the water, so I'll fight anything off. Arr. This is a peaceful night, man. Listen. No wind, no rain. No rapids. As much as I like those rapids, man, they get loud after a while. Especially when you're trying to film. I'm just trolling now with the big X-Rap. They see me trolling. They hate it. This is what I wanted. This is what I heard that. This is what I was waiting for. This is the first time I can relax in three days. Love and life right now, guys. You know what would make this better? <laughs> you know. An old trout. What is that? There's something swimming. I think it's a loon. I can't see. The sun is so bright. Okay, well, I guess I'll check back in if I get something. Fingers crossed. <laughs> That's probably the size of the fish I caught the other day. Just in case the wind kicks up tonight, just precautionary.
There's that fat wood I was talking about. Got it out of a stump. Just reeks of resin. So this is solid, very heavy duty, very heavy. I'm gonna split this down, get my fire going with it. Oh yeah, you can see it. You can see the resin. Well, that fat wood was really good. It's going like crazy. See very orange flames and black smoke. Oh, I gotta dry. Oh, I gotta dry out my feet and warm them up. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about, folks. This is what I've been waiting for. Those two first days were challenging ah, and disheartening to say the least but oh so no trout today a little bit of an explanation why though from that guy and also it's already two more trout this trip than I caught all year last year and last year was the first year I had caught any trout I can catch bass and pike and perch, but uh, they say you're not a real fisherman until you, <laughs> until you can catch trout, so. Um, yeah, tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's supposed to be a nice day. By the looks of it, it will be. It's crazy, I was looking at my map, and I'm really in the thick of it. I, I can't get out of here for a three day travel, regardless if I go back the way I came, or out the way I'm trying to go. I'm three days travel deep in the wilderness by myself here. I'm deep, I'm in the middle of nowhere really. I'm right smack dab in the middle. So I traveled east, this whole time I traveled east until today. So two and a half days traveling east and pr probably the last half of the day today I traveled no, not even. Not even. For only for a couple hours I traveled south. And then tomorrow I continue south and then start heading west. And then that'll create my loop. Uh, on my sixth day, I have a ton of work. I have to go upstream and against the wind. And the current in the, these rivers are crazy right now, like I was saying, from all the rains and the snow melt. So that's going to be fun. Looking forward to that. When I told the guy that I saw over there, we are exchanging route info and just the normal things you do when you see somebody you haven't, you haven't talked to somebody in a few days. Um, he said, uh-oh. When I told him my route going out, he said, that's going to be rough, man. I said, why? Because of the, uh, the current? And he said, yeah, but not only that, the wind always goes that way. So, when we go against current, against wind, but... I don't have to worry about that for another two, day, two days. <laughs> well, I'm super glad I got over that hump. It was, a, uh, it was a rough day, and today was the nicest day by far. Just like I said, my guts were all messed up, which makes my butt hurt. And it'll butt hurt <laughs> but uh, yeah it drains me physically and um, mentally too but it just goes to show you and it's a lesson that I've learned before pain is relative um, if you just put your mind to something then a lot of the times you can do it obviously there's exceptions 
<laughs> break a leg or sever a limb. Um, walk it off doesn't really work, right? But I did over seven kilometers of portage today. A lot of those I did double carry. So I worked it out. It was like 6,200 uh, 6, meters of portage. Which some of them I single carried, some of them I double carried, some I did halfway. I can't, there's no way of knowing. But I did well over seven kilometers today of portaging. Um, the first two days, I don't even think I did that combined. So, but I'm fine. I'm here. I'm having the best night I have, have had so far. Finally get to relax. Yesterday I was in bed by now. It's after nine now. So, yeah, I'll probably stay up till about 10 or 11 tonight, I think. Maybe I'll try and sleep in tomorrow a little bit. I got a big day tomorrow, actually. Maybe I won't sleep in. I'll check it out here. I really hope you guys could hear that owl. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? I think it's a barred owl. My wife cooks for me. You guys know the who cooks for you, who cooks for you? Trivia. I came to the realization today that the color blue, it, when I'm out here, is a sign of like relief or um, like a good sign. Whether it be the blue sky after two days of cold rain, or especially the blue of the lake after like a two and a half kilometer portage. <laughs> uh, the old color blue. Wasn't there a song called Blue? I'm, I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to sing it. Great, now I have it in my head. Who even knows? What are those words? What are those words to that song? Some of you know what I mean. Blue in the. And who sang that? I'm headed up to my tarp. I'm going to attach my secondary tarp on it as a door just because I feel like it today. I don't really know why, but I do. All right, good night, folks. Well, I wanted to sleep in, but there's an awesome sunrise starting to go away. By the time I got out of bed, it was a lot more pink, but very nice. It's not even six in the morning yet. What a beauty morning already. It's really weird that gull was grabbing grass from the from the water in its bill and he took it off somewhere obviously to build a nest. Oh, I would assume to build a nest. I've never seen a gull do that before. I think I'm going to light a proper fire this morning, hang out here for a little bit uh, instead of using my bush buddy stove. Depending if you can get dry enough twigs, actually just light them. Break the ends. Oh, I guess you can't see that break the ends so that they're exposed and put a bunch of them together ah, filming and trying to do things sometimes doesn't work
It's these uh, down times where I start to really think about the family at home. Emerald's getting up and getting ready for school right now. Will's getting ready for work. <clears throat> I'm always thinking. I actually say it out loud. <laughs> Hope you had a good day, honey. Today's day four. I'm starting to feel it. I woke up this morning pretty sore. I've got, uh, I don't know what I did, but right here on the other side, on my left side, something's pulled. Every time I cough or move it a certain direction, there's like a, like a pulling. It's a weird, weird feeling. The only way you can describe it as a pulling, <laughs> making up a tea, Tim Horton's uh, honey tea. And then um, I shot a uh, piece of wood underneath my, my middle fingernail yesterday. And the thing, it opened my fingernail up like it's there's a gap now. It's super painful. <laughs> so I put a band-aid on that and then I got a little uh, cut there right where I paddle. So, Oh, and my elbow. My elbow is jacked. I noticed that last night when I was coming to the, the site here. So, nothing, uh, nothing a little work can't handle. <laughs> I'll get up and start paddling. I won't think about any of it. Start portaging, paddling for the day. It's chilly. It got cold again last night. Actually, the sun's gone. It's clouding up. I don't want another full three days of rain. I have, uh, yeah, I, I don't want another few days of rain. <laughs> I'm freezing as it is. Now, sleeping bag sucks. Marmot. That marmot quark, what the quark is right, man. That thing is a piece of crap. I do not recommend that at all. It's rated for negative one, and I'm getting cold. There's no way it got down to negative one last night, and I'm, like, having to layer up, and I'm shivering. I bought that sleeping bag because I had a plus three Celsius bag that I was using for shoulder seasons like this, and it was getting too cold. And that plus three Celsius bag is warmer than that negative one Celsius marmot. And marmot's supposed to be... Maybe marmot has a couple different styles like you know how north face has like hipster urban crap and then it has actual camping stuff maybe that, that's what that is but it's a sleeping bag why would they make a crappy quality sleeping bag I, it's not like it was cheap you know what i mean yeah marmot get your act together on that one guys and like i know what it's like to be a cold sleeper i am a cold sleeper and i i adjust for it but if that plus three Celsius bag can keep me warm and stuff like this. And I used that bag for like three, no, like six years or more. I bought that when we went to Lake Superior. Yeah, like six years ago. Oh, yeah. Here we go again. So I've got a short paddle out of here, and then I have a 75 meter portage, which is good, because that's not much. It'll be just enough to warm me up. All the snow. Yesterday on one of the portage trails, there's still a good half a foot of snow in a couple spots. I took a big old poo, big old healthy poo, and I'm starving right away. It's like food is completely just fuel here. Okay, I've been carrying these around for a couple trips now. Cactus candy, prickly pear cactus, made in the US. My mom got them, she visited the Grand Canyon like a few months ago. Water, sugar, corn syrup, solids, prickly pear cactus, juice, pectin, citric acid, sodium, so a little bit of uh, cactus candy. Let's try this out. Oh, this is strange looking.
Wow, that's good. Oh my goodness. Thanks, mummy. Energy? Energy. I feel so slow right now. Like the past two, th the past three days, for the most part of those, I was on going with the current on a fast flowing river. I feel like I'm paddling through pudding right now. It's gonna take me a lot longer to do the same amount of kilometers. Just uh, almost done this 1200 meter portage and I saw, I looked up in front of me by the water, there's a stream running there. I saw like a, what I think is a fisher, could be wrong, but it's a large, size of a large cat light brown and tan colors and he bounded away very uh, very nimble i guess not majestic nimble and then he went up onto the hill and i saw him again it's super early still it's 10 o'clock in the morning i'm gonna eat my lunch and then i have a six kilometer paddle across the probably the largest lake that i have i think i've reached uh, my stride okay i'm getting in tune I'm literally just, there's something about knowing that I don't have to get out of this boat for six kilometers. I can just paddle straight on the, into this big lake. I'm not pressed for time. I don't feel rushed. I don't feel like I have to power through anything. I'm literally closing my eyes. It's like meditation almost. It's like a very meditative state. I could honestly close my eyes and paddle at this pace and just keep going. There's wind in my face. My hands are cold, but it's a good feeling. Day four. They say that if you want to experience what canoe tripping is really about, you need to go longer than four days and you need to go by yourself so that you can really get into the groove of things and start to work the way the world works out here at its pace. It helps when there's no rain. <laughs> Oh man, how Joe got his groove back. You gotta love that, man. The family of loons. And it's all echoing on this huge lake. It's glass. There's no one around. There's not a sound except for those loons. Zen, I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it. Oh, this is why I'm here. To be in the moment. I'm cold, but I'm not uncomfortable at all. I feel very good. thirsty. I am three quarters through this part of the lake, then it opens up into like a, it's still the same lake but a different like bay. Okay, I paddled the six and a half K or 6.3 whatever it is to the narrow channel. I still got more to go, but I have to pee so very bad. I've drank two liters, no, I've drank one liter. Each of these is half a liter. I've drank one liter of uh, water, and my little girl bladder cannot hold it anymore. So there's a small island here. I'm gonna pull up and uh, go pee and maybe grab something to, to eat. Gotta pee, 
Wow, that was glorious. I don't think I want to stay here and cook a lunch. I was going to cook some rice, have a hot lunch here, um, but it's super windy. I'm on an island and the wind is actually kicking up pretty good. But this is a really cool island. Red pine everywhere. And then check this out. There's a sweet fire pit. So you can sit here, these rocks or logs or that rock, and then it's tucked right in here trying to stay away from the wind I imagine but the wind comes from that way so it's it's hard but pretty cool you can see there's been tons of fire here from the rock scar some, some wood left over there's shade from all the red pine too if this was summertime this would be an ideal spot an ideal campsite the wind would keep the bugs down very nice rock formation you could swim big lake for swimming oh, oh man that wind She's chilly, bud. She's chilly. Okay, time to get out of here. Get away from this wind, or paddle into the wind, rather. <laughs> okay, this is rough. The portage sign is way up there. I already went the other way because I didn't think there was any way I had to paddle into this. I literally have to paddle up these rapids to get to the damn portage. This is going to be rough. Oh, sh**. How, how am I supposed to do this? How the hell am I supposed to do this? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is sketchy, sketchy, sketchy. Come on. My elbow is jacked. Oh my God, I had to switch the GoPro, come at it from a different angle, but I still have to cross it to get to the portage. The, the water's way too high right now. This is crazy. Oh man, how am I going to do this? Oh my god, I gotta walk in. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, I thought that was it for old Joe. Oh man. Oh my god. I didn't even see this here. Well, why the hell is the portage sign not here? Oh, oh my god. Nope, too much. That was not fun. I like a little excitement, but holy, oh my God. Oh man, and this isn't a portage trail at all. This is just a, somewhere that has a little bit of a clearing. There is a, a fire pit there. So I assume this is, I don't know man what this is, but I gotta try to find my way to the portage trail now. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh man, that was That was too much. I thought that was it. My camera wasn't strapped in or anything. My DSLR was just up there. I thought I was losing that. I thought I was dipping for sure. Oh man. Okay. Let's go try and find a trail. That's what I mean, man. It's the same thing that guy was saying. These waters are up so high it's absolutely ridiculous you know what really scares me is that I have to go upstream 
uh, tomorrow and the last day, maybe just the last day, for 30 kilometers. This port, this, they would have put the portage sign here, if this was not, if this was normal, if this was the way that the the river acted normally, the portage would be here, not 100 meters up that way. I actually got to just sit here and regroup for a minute. I'm uh, I'm shook up. I'm all shook up. That was stupid. That was a dumb thing. But I thought if I skirted it on that side, I saw the portage sign way up there. Why would they put the portage sign there if you're not supposed to go up there? No wonder I'm not catching any trout. I put I put my lure in there. And it freaking gets washed downstream in a matter of seconds. It's moving too fast. Oh. Now I'm second guessing the route getting back home. If I have to, I know it's not gonna be like this every spot. And it, when it is bad like this, there will be a portage. But I'm just saying, this is a reality check of how much, the, how strong the current is because of the rains and because of all the melt, just the high waters right now. I gotta check things out on my map here. I have to, uh, I might have to reroute, which means a whole lot of portaging. So right now I'm here. I am supposed to go down, camp around here, then tomorrow come up and then I hit the Tim, which is going to be flowing this way. The Tim River flows that way. And I'll have to paddle, either paddle all the way down the Tim River, camp on Roseberry and out the next day, or I have to, which is up, 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 upstream against the current. Or my other option is see how it is until I get to Tim, or on the Tim River until I get to the first portage. These are black portages, which means they're not maintained and they're hard, difficult. So that's a 2,695 meter, and then a tiny like one minute paddle, then a 2,000 meter. So that's already almost uh, five clicks. And then a tiny port, uh, paddle four, tiny paddle five, tiny paddle 120, 230, into Roseberry. But I don't have to go against the current that way, but I'm portaging a whole hell of a lot in succession. I'm gonna have to make that call tomorrow. I don't wanna do either of those things. I, I don't mind paddling upstream, but... Have you seen this? <laughs> It's like a tomogamy thing, you know, find your portage, make your own portage, to find your way to the portage, to do your portage. Say portage again, Joe. Portage. Well, so much for this being a short day. It's almost five o'clock now. I'm on the last little paddle to, my, to a campsite. I have to, uh, ducks, you hear those ducks? I have to pick one of the two campsites on this lake and uh not much left to do today i don't have any energy i pushed it my elbow was done my this left elbow it it's throbbing uh when i was power stroking like trying to get power stroke when i was trying to get um up those rapids or whatever it was just like the icing on the cake there it was already sore and tender and i just pulled it so It's looking more and more like I'm going to be doing those big long portages tomorrow because uh, the thought of going upstream into the wind with this elbow, I can't even paddle this elbow normally. Like right now in the, this lake, it hurts like crazy. I'm going to pop a couple Advil tonight and hopefully it'll be different in the morning. But anyways, I'll get back at you when we get to, I'll get back with you when I get to camp. Oh my goodness. All right, we got an A-frame tarp configuration tonight. Fourth night, fourth different tarp configuration. Not too bad, but this one, in my opinion, is the most homely feeling, the most tent-like, the most weather resistant. Winds died down some, at least for now. So I think I'm going to come sit out here at the fire pit, which is a lot nicer. I'd rather rather do that. Pretty legit fire pit with some benches for the first time. So, cop a squat, Joe. Cop a squat. Ultra bushcraft today. 
I, uh, I don't see any birch around and there's no real fine pine twigs or hemlock twigs so I'm just using the sawdust fire starter sometimes I like to put it on the pot on before I put too much twigs in so that I can tell what can fit in you know what I mean I can just kind of slide it in now <laughs> half of them fall out there's that wind again She's chilly. The wind is whipping right through. I got this down vest. It's the same as my Mountain Hardware um, down jacket. The Dino Therm is just the vest. Let's sap all over it. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry, guys. I'm super hungry. Today kicked my butt, man. I started at, I want to say before 7, didn't get here till 5.30, almost 6, pretty long day. Everything was going really good in the beginning, I was having a great day, but uh, the realization of going against, against the current and against the wind now, it, uh, I've gone against the current in the Tim River, but I'm trying to go back up. I've gone, I've done it. I did it last year at least once, probably, I think I did it twice. But neither were in the spring. And obviously abnormally high water right now, even for the spring. So I have some, uh, some thinking to do, some decisions to make. A lot of it's gonna depend on how my elbow feels. It's, it's, a, it's a hindrance for sure. It's a previous injury. And, um, yeah, man, just, just aggravated the hell out of it on this trip, I guess. So even, uh, even now when I'm in camp and I'm trying to, I was trying to push over a tree to get some firewood, any motion, it's like the pushing, the, the right here in the elbow, it's all inflamed. It's really bad. So I don't know if it's at all possible. I know it's going to rain tomorrow and the next day. It's coming in, and my barometer is telling me it was in the forecast before I came out here, and I can feel it. There's something coming in. Um, I might try to make the long haul tomorrow and get out of here tomorrow. I couldn't paddle the Tim River and get out tomorrow. I can't. I can't go my original route and get out tomorrow. I can possibly go um, the Portage route and get out, but even that will be a killer on my elbow. Because at the end, I have to do the Tim River regardless, another stretch of it. So we'll see. We'll play it by ear. Even if I get super close to the car tomorrow, and then that just cuts off a bunch of time for the last day, I think that'll be all right. I just uh, I don't really have any desire to stay two more nights in the, in the rain. But we'll see. We'll see how she goes. Okay, I just did the math. Still eating, by the way. It's super delicious. <laughs> Martin, that's one for you. Um, if I go my original way, if I go my original way, not up the Black por Portages, but it, instead up the Tim River against the current, it's 42.3 kilometers to the car, which is not doable against the current. If I go the Black Portage way, it's 30.2 kilometers. So I'm saving 12 kilometers. 30 kilometers is doable. I've done it. I've, I've done it many times. The only thing is, those portages are rough. There's a whole lot. I think that's that's the route I'm going to go. And I don't have to make it to the car tomorrow night. You know what I mean? I'm booked for another day here. I can stay another day. I just... This weather is garbage right now. And this, this was supposed to be my second nice day. So I only got really got one nice day. And if, if it comes in, I have I honestly have no desire to stay with this crappy weather. I can't even can't even relax. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go huddle in my tarp after this. It's seven o'clock. It's all part of it, and I get that. I'm just done. You know what I mean? That's what I say all the time. Like you're done. You're done. So regardless, if I can't make it out the whole way tomorrow. 
I will have put a good chunk. I was expecting my last day to be a big 30, 30 kilometer day. So tomorrow might be my last day. It might be my, might be my last night. Who knows? It all depends on the weather, how I'm feeling. Which I kind of like too. It leaves, it leaves it up in the open. You know what I mean? More of an adventure. I like being by myself. I can make those decisions and changes without having to worry about a canoe partner, which is not a big deal, but you know what I mean. Oh, thanks for the spaghetti, honey. Well, I can't say I'm not disappointed about the fish. I probably won't even fish tomorrow if I'm doing that long haul, just hauling an ass out of here. The guy I ran into yesterday said that he thinks we're a week too early this year. It's hard to gauge it because like some years are different, right? I was trying to beat the black flies and I was trying to get into the fish. And it was already booked, that's the thing. Like I booked it months in advance. So I, you have to worry about ice out because ice out was like three or four days before I came. So there was a concern that it was gonna be pushed back anyway. And then there's a mad scramble to book your sites and all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, it just, uh, I'm not a good trout fisherman yet, and a week too early, very high waters, unfavorable conditions, cold water, all that stuff. So there's only more time to learn, more time to practice, and other trips to do. This year I've already, in one trip, beat my trout record, so <laughs> I can't be too disappointed with that. My real disappointment is not getting that first trout on film and letting him get away before he got on film. Because I swear to God, he was the one that got away, right? No, legit, he was, he was eight times bigger than the other ones I was getting. But that's okay. Again, like I said, tomorrow I'm, I'm not fishing. I'm just booking it. It's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be stormy, not nice weather anyway. So other excuses that make me not sound like such a bad fisherman. I think I'm going to head to bed soon. It's fucking windy and cold. It looks so light in the camera. I'm gonna bring my bag with me. What I'm going to do is because I've been so cold every night. I did this last night too. So I take my Primloft uh, puffy jacket zip it up, tie the sleeves in a loose bow two times, double over and knot, and then now I have like a sleeve where I can slip over my feet, and then that goes inside my sleeping bag. So I have like a double layer near my feet where usually I'm the coldest, although in this sleeping bag there seems to be a lot um, a lot of gaps where there should be down. It's 850 fill, so you think it'd be good. I wonder if I can write Marm and tell them. It's just ridiculous. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The zipper doesn't stay shut either on this thing. Just multiple bad things about the sleeping bag. Okay. I'm gonna turn in. I'm gonna probably get up at like five in the morning. I think I, I, I worked it out. I think I can do it in 11 hours tomorrow. So if I get up and leave by five, I can be done by four. So yeah, even if I get up and leave by six, be done by five, that'd be all right. That's the plan anyway. Wish me luck. All right, good night guys, I'll see you in the morning. Oh, good morning. It's 5.20. It rained all night long. I gotta get up and have breakfast and get my butt out of here. I had a full day, this is like gonna be a marathon day. So I kept a, a large Advil 
next to me here so I can take it when I got up and it's gone. I don't know, I, a mouse was scurrying on my head too last night, I had to yell at it, so I don't know if mice like Advil, but this guy might. I hope so, because I really needed that, it was my only one, and I wanted to take it as soon as I got up so I could work on my elbow before I started paddling, and there's nowhere to be found, so I really hope that freaking mouse has no pain for a while. <laughs> Bush buddy still for the win. I just kept a bunch of twigs underneath here. Last night, like I've been doing. Rain falls lightly on the tar as I cook oatmeal in my bed, and I'll be busting my hump to get anywhere. Feeling like this, and I'll be. Where's my spork? There it is. I'm losing my mind. Here's something I didn't read about these portages last night. This is the first one that I would have to do. The portage between Stag Lake and Tim River often floods in the middle until late in the season, August or so. So it's definitely flooded right now. Uh, you may need to paddle through the portage prior to August. The portage is also covered with numerous blowdowns, making it extremely hard to follow, especially going from Stag Lake towards the Tim, which I'm not doing. I'm going the other way, assuming you're traveling that direction. Once you travel across the pond, follow the creek downstream, pass the blowdowns up into the forest. Be careful not to accidentally follow the animal trail instead. We all know how well I am with direction, right? Oh, okay, in the boat, 6.50. Let's see how this elbow's feeling today. Not too shabby. That's awesome. I'm super pumped about that. Okay, as you can tell, it's raining. It's a rainy day. I assume it'll be like this all day, so we're gonna make the push. We're gonna make the long haul today. I'm gonna try to find my way to um, the river now. So today will be like a marathon. Oh, there's the elbow. Today will be like a marathon style video shooting. Day five has a very ominous feeling to it. The gray of the sky, the uh, difficulty of the portages, the length of the portages. Day five, ominous. My elbow is jacked, guys. I'm not, I've not gone far at all, and it's like, I really wish I had that Advil. Stupid mouse. Or Sam Larson when you need him. I found the river and she's swollen. That extra rain last night doesn't help anything either. If I stop paddling, I lose momentum and start floating backwards immediately. So it's a constant battle. Ah, my elbow, man. I can't even follow my portage trails because the river is so swollen. I have to pass them every time. I have to go farther than the takeout. Because if I put in at the spot, I get washed down river. So this is all sorts of fun. <laughs> yeah, man, this is all rough. I'm gonna have to paddle my butt off to not get swept downstream here. This is crazy. <sighs> all right, hold on for your life here. Hold on to your boots. Oh man, sketch pad. Okay, well, that almost didn't work. Here we go. Oh 
Oh my god. You guys, this is nuts. I can't let up for a minute. Ugh. Oh, this feels great on the elbow. I can't do this anymore. I have to do the portages. This is just trying to get to the first one. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, man. When the river widen, widens out like this, it's not so bad, actually. Um, paddling wise it is bad for navigating but um, against the current it's not so bad when it widens out here it is it's making me second guess my decision once I come to that first portage I'm gonna stop there eat something look at the map a bunch and heavily weigh my decision because once I've done that first portage I'm committed you know what I mean? There's no going back. That's the big one. That's the almost three kilometer black portage. So my mind's racing right now. Just trying to think of the best way to do this. Weighing all my options. I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to portage. I'm eating my food now. I'm at the portage. <clears throat> I'm just going to haul ass. It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. I had to go first with my backpack to try to find the way. This trail is like barely ever used and there's a bunch of game trails around it. So you gotta try to not mix them up. But they did they did put signs on this one. Every so often there's a yellow sign. So that's a saving grace for sure. But uh, I just hiked straight up a hill, back down and up it again to get my, to get my canoe. I. Uh, I can't single carry over here. I can if it, oh, I gotta pay attention. I can't, oh, there it is. I can if it, uh, if it flattens out, but just, I'm like up in the hardwoods, like this looks like nothing you've seen the whole trip. It's all been pine and low lying stuff. I'm super hardwoody now, super hardwoody. Ugh. Oh, I am on a canoe trip, boys and girls. This is what it's all about. Walking three kilometers up a hill in the rain so that I can avoid <laughs> paddling upstream <laughs> in heavy waters. All right, well, even more adventure. The trail split off. There's a fork in the road. I can't see a sign or a real trail, and this is what I'm walking through. So this is not really easy to navigate Ugh. or carry a canoe and pack through really. Come on. Oh, okay. I see a sign. I don't even know if this is the trail, but I see a sign. So back from my backpack then. Make it with my backpack because I can see better when I have my backpack on instead of my canoe. I can't single carry this. It's ridiculous. There's no way. So this is going to become a seven kilometer uh, portage or more by the time I keep scoping things out. I'm attempting it. Found a flat spot. So crossed over a bunch of blowdowns and uh, still single carrying as long as I can. <laughs> Day five. Ominous. Did I mention ominous? My spirits are unusually high. Which is very good. Okay, sissy bar for the win. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. I'm having fun. I swear I am. You know, I can do this. I can definitely do this. It's only a day. I can do a day. 30 kilometer and a 30 kilometer day. Wow plus with all the back and forth, but I can do it, even if it takes me 12 hours. I want to do it. It's like a challenge now. <laughs> you guys see him? There he goes. See him? I hope so. 
first bear on a portage. Sweet. I sure hope that got in the camera. He took off. He ran. I'm gonna go see if I can find him. I know, I know. But he's scared of me. He doesn't want nothing to do with me. Where'd you go, bud? I think I have to go this way anyway, so I have to scare him off. Yeah, this is my this is the portage trail. Where are you? He ran. He's a big boy. I'm here. Oh, I really hope it showed up in the stupid GoPro. Big old black bear. Where are you, bud? He was in this like meadow right by that tree. Well, I gotta come back through here with my gear and my boat. I just wanna make sure I'm aware because when my boat's on my head, I can't see much. That was really cool. Decent sized bear. I'm gonna go uh, make sure this is my path, but at first I'm gonna grab my paddle just as a little bit of uh, deterrent. I'm walking through. I don't even care at all. It's not even an issue. Well, he's gone, I believe. I know my paddle might not be a, a weapon, but it would, it would be a deterrent for sure. I just gotta make sure that this is my path. It looks that way, but... There you go. That's your answer for all your what happens when you see a bear in the woods? Questions. You go try to find it and get it on film. No, you just stay confident, stay authoritative. Um, I never had any kind of fear or fear in my voice. I was aware of the situation and I still am as I'm walking now. I keep my head on a swivel because I don't want to startle him or her. I believe it was a him, it was very big, uh, especially if there's babies. But yeah, just keep a cool head. That's only like my second or third bear in the wild that I've seen. I've seen tons of bears before, just not actually in the deep wild. They've always been on at garbage dumps or side of the road. In Vancouver Island, I saw it in the wild there for sure, but same reaction, just kind of talk to them a little bit. This one, this one here was a lot more scared. It ran away as soon as I tried to get up, get on film it, but it took off. So anyways, now I'm carrying my, my paddle constantly. I'm going to go back and get my backpack now. Before I was carrying my paddle with my uh, my boat, excuse me, I'm just gonna keep it on in hand the whole time now, just cause like if it does charge me, I'm gonna ah, like raise this above my head, wave it around and scream like this guttural scream, which will work. It's part of the uh, part of the portage. I gotta cross back to get my bag, but I'm all out of water, and uh, I've been on this trail for a couple hours now, so time to fill up and drink. Oh man, I'm glad I am glad I took the portage now. I got to see that bear. I was gonna say, like, I haven't seen any animals other than like little otters and maybe a fisher. I'm done. I'm done the first portage. That was the most difficult Algonquin portage I've ever done. Bar none. It doesn't touch a tomogamy portage, but But I was rewarded with a bear and the sense of accomplishment. We'll see, see how long that lasts though because I literally have a four minute paddle and then I have to do it again. I just did 2,600 meters, I have to do 2,000 meters. So it's basically the same thing in, in four or five minutes. That took me, I started at eight o'clock, 10.37. Two and a half hours, and I doubled back a few times. I bet you I did, I don't know, six kilometers, because I had to double back so much. I'm wiped. Oh, and I ate a sandwich, two granola bars, uh, fruit snack, and drank like two liters of water, or a liter of water, sorry. <sighs> liter of cola, don't spit in that cop's burger. 
Farva. Meow. Now I'm freezing cold now. Out in the water. It's, this rain is all day rain. There's no, <laughs> no let up in sight. I'm glad I'm doing more portaging than I am paddling today. <laughs> Easy to say no when I'm in the boat. Oh man. My spirits aren't that high anymore, guys. Kind of dwindling. Kind of dwindling a bit. Just. I didn't film any of it. But I freaking beast moded that 2,000 liter portage. I single carried like 90% of it. I only dropped the canoe sometimes to. Uh, to find out where I was going. But I found something cool on the trail. I'll try and show you here before tipping myself. I found, I guarantee nobody's been on that trail this year. That's a very uh, rarely used trail and there's no footprints on it. I saw footprints on every other trail, uh, Portage except for this one and, and the one before, the big ones. I found that in the mud on the way. I don't know what kind of booze it is, but it's still sealed. It was attached to something else. I'm keeping this thing as a souvenir. I'm not drinking it. I'm gonna keep it as a souvenir. That's gonna go in my freaking camping room. That's the, uh, oh, sorry folks. As a reminder, my beast mode 2,000 meter portage. Oh, I feel like a man. I'm happy with myself. I'm very happy with myself right now. Can you tell? Okay, that's why I'm not paddling. My elbow is done. Uh, I gotta go. I think I'm done the big portages now. What time is it? I started that one at 11. 12.22. So, much better timing on that one. It was only 600, it was 600 meters shorter, but it didn't take me almost three hours either. So, anyways, now we're good to go. I got like a 400 and a couple other ones to do. I can single carry all those, but there is still a ton of paddling to do today. I had 30 kilometers to do today, and all I've really done is like six so far uh, in distance wise. I have daylight until like eight o'clock. So like eight more hours almost. I think I can do it. I haven't turned the camera on in a while. It's two o'clock now, which means I've been going for eight hours. I started at six this morning. I think I have a 14 hour day ahead of me. I'm making some crazy progress right now. Not 14 more hours, a 14 hour day total. So eight hours, another six hours on top of that. Um, I make crazy good progress. I'm flying through these 500 meter portages, all black portages, which means they're not maintained like it's nothing. I'm doing them 500 meters in 15 minutes tops. So I'm making good progress, but what, what might kill me is I'm gonna get onto a long lake and I think the wind direction is gonna screw me, but I'm really, really happy with my progress. I've, I've been living off of jerky and M&M peanuts. I'm eating in the boat. I'm drinking, I'm filling up water in the boat, and I'm just stopping to pee at every portage. Okay, I'm out onto Longbow now, which is the long lake that I was worried about the wind. But the wind is going in my favor. It's perfect. I got a tailwind. So that's awesome. Oh, why is the wind changing? Why is the wind suddenly changing? <laughs> so I just came across a group of people at a campsite, and I asked them if they had any idea how far how long it would take to get to the access point where I put in, and they said about four hours. So that's good. I'm not sure if they realize about the current that I'm going up against it at, at times, but when I started paddling away, they said, at that speed, three hours. <laughs> so that's a good sign. It's almost three o'clock now, so I'm making stupid good time if that's the case. Yeah, it's 2.50. So if that's true, if all that pans out, I'm laughing treat myself to like a, I don't know, maybe a steak, if, if that's true, if I can get out that quick, go to a freaking steakhouse, get a beer, and maybe I'll, oh man, <laughs> that lifted my spirits quite a bit, I thought I still had another five, I guess it's only an hour difference, but anyways, we shall continue, I am soaked to the bone, everything, um, and I'm, I'm being... I'm very, I'm very chilled if I'm being honest, but anyways, just keep going, keep pushing on, and my body heat will keep me warm enough. 
I'm just accessing the Tim River now from Roseberry past that lake. So for on my map it says I have 11 kilometers to go. So we'll see how far or how long that takes upstream now. I feel like I made the right call changing my route and doing the portaging instead of paddling the whole day. So I, I literally portaged for most of the day, um, which saved my elbow a little bit. And I was with the wind for 90% of it, which was a huge help uh, of the paddling, that is. Um, ah, ah. So yeah, anyways, now that I'm on the Tim River going upstream, I'm still with the wind, which is helping. Get quick through here, I'm gonna get grounded. Yeah, so I'm still going with the wind, even though I'm going against the current. And the wind is relatively strong, so it is helping. It, it's a, uh, a bonus for sure. So for the course of this trip and any other trip I'm by myself, my head in my head I constantly sing songs. Like, I can't turn it off almost. It, it kind of gets, well, it does get very annoying after a while, but for the longest time I had this stupid Green Day song. I'm still breathing, I'm still breathing, uh, which I hate that song, but for the half, half the freaking trip I had that in my head, now you know what's in my head? I haven't heard this in forever. Aruba, Jamaica, ooh, I want to take you to Bermuda, Bahama, come on, pretty mama. I have no idea why that got into my head, maybe because I was thinking of warm, warm places, <laughs> but like, what is it, the Beach Boys? Is that the Beach Boys? How do I even know about the Beach Boys? We'll get there fast and then we'll take it slow. That's where we want to go. I hope nobody's around. Way down in Kokomo. Way down in Lombo. Yep. That is what... Getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning, paddling and portaging, all day will do to your brain. I have eaten every single piece of food that I've brought that I don't have to cook. I've eaten it all today and I haven't pooped. So I imagine it's gonna be a, a burn burner. <laughs> oh, too much? Is that too much? The water in here even looks higher than it did five days ago when I came in. This is the same river I accessed from. Obviously, I'm going out the same way. Uh, but yeah, it's like flooded completely out, man. I remember coming here in the summer. There's defined waterways. Now it's just like water everywhere with a little bit of plants blocking it. It's soupy. She's soupy, guys. And I'm just paddling into the reeds because I'm not paying attention. Ah. Uh, What's even weirder about that song? Do you remember, obviously, the David Letterman show? The Late Show with David Letterman, whatever it's called. Um, remember when they did the Nagano Olympics in Japan? <laughs> oh, oh, what's his name? Uh, what's his little buddy? Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Anyways, the guy who sings the songs, a bald guy. He did this song. <laughs> Instead of Kokomo, it was Nagano. And one of the lines was, They don't even get Dave's show. That's... Yeah, anyways, maybe I'm going too far with that. But I remember that. However, however long ago, the Nagano uh, Olympics were. Oh, oh my god. Schaefer. It's Paul Schaefer. Remembered. Paul Schaefer. I think he's Canadian. Still paddling. Hours later.
bottle. I have no energy at all. I have two kilometers left. Go home stretch. I'm starting to shiver. Uh, man, it's gonna be 12 hours by the time I get there, not 14. So I beat what I thought by two. I started at six. It's like 5.30 now. So it should be six-ish. When I get to the put-out spot, or take-out spot, and that's 12 hours of freaking work. I never stopped for lunch. I never stopped for a break or anything. The only time I stopped <coughs> was to pee. I ate on the go. I drank on the go. This is legit 12 full solid hour day of four. Half the day was portage. Literally half the day was portage, half the day was paddle. Six and six. Oh my. I really wanted to show you my elation of getting to the car. I gotta put this down, I'm shaking too much. My elation of getting to the car. My uh, my SD card got full on my, my GoPro as I was approaching. It's, can you see that? 10 after six, is that in focus? Whatever, 10 after six. I started at 6 a.m. That's a 12 hour day. That was full 12. That was no stopping. I ate and drank and everything in the boat. I only stopped to pee. My elbow was jacked. I legit have to go to the doctor and get x-rays done about it. I'm shivering. I got changed. I got the roof, car on the roof. I gotta, I gotta make a call to Sean and, and try to get to his house because I can't drive home today. I'm freaking done. Let me, uh, oh, I'm fogging up here. Listen, guys, I had a good time. I'm going to, uh, fogging up. I, uh, that was a rough trip. I wish a lot of things went differently. Too much rain, not enough fish, too much water. If I could sum the whole trip up with one word, the word would be wet. <coughs> wet. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. <laughs> this is going to be some type B fun. I'm going to look back at this and be like, wow, I did something crazy. I think I'm going to do a follow-up video because I have a lot of things I want to say, but it, I'm done. I'm done right now. Thank you very much for watching. There will be more videos soon.